Today on the show, Ghana to meet investors this week to test eurobond demand. Bene readies for its first foray into foreign bond markets. Plus, Zimbabwe Central Bank head hints at more weakening of new currency. Hello and welcome. This is Business Incorporated coming to you live from Channels Television. I'm Chimizi Ubi Iwago. First, the markets and stocks here on the African continent were mostly in the red territory at intraday except for Egypt. The JSC index was down 0.32%. In Nigeria, the NSC sustained the negative sentiment seen last week, shedding 0.18% at intraday. However, the EGX30 index in Egypt was up 0.19% at intraday. Kenya closed in the red on Monday. And most major Gulf markets rose today, mirroring gains in global markets while Qatar was lifted, but it's blue chip stocks. The Qatar index was up 0.22% after five sessions of losses. Middle East's biggest lender, Qatar National Bank, advanced 1.3%, and blue chip petrochemical maker industries, Qatar, increased 1%. In Dubai, the index rose 0.25%, with its biggest listed developer, Emma Properties, gaining 1.1%, and Damak Properties adding 2.9%. Saudi Arabia's index was up 0.03%, with lender Samba Financial Group gaining 1.1%, and telecommunications firm Etihad Etisalat rising 3.6%. However, the Abu Dhabi index was down 0.18%. And European markets were mostly higher in the morning, ahead of a crucial vote in the UK Parliament on the country's Brexit withdrawal agreement. For more... Let's bring in Paul Christian Breeze from the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Hello, Paul. Good afternoon. Good hey. to see you again. It's been a while, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it has. Good to see you. <laughs> right. Well, surprise plot twist in Brexit negotiations. Theresa May and Jean-Claude Juncker have agreed to legally binding changes to the Brexit deal. Will this change the course of Brexit? And what do investors think? Yeah, it was the clock was about to strike 12 o'clock midnight, not just figuratively, but also quite literally last night when Theresa May and Jean-Claude Juncker came out to uh, to announce this this uh, yeah the surprise plot, plot twist there um, that finally seemed to uh, give a solution to the contested backstop the EU wants the border between Northern Ireland and Ireland uh, to stay open, and uh, it seems they have found an agreement to. To, um, to, well, keep that open at least until the end of the transition phase, which was kind of a surprise for, uh, for really everyone um, in the market. The pound sterling shot up on the news. Also, uh, markets were quite optimis optimistic. Investors um, didn't expect that. But then... Uh, today came high noon, around noon time. Uh, the Attorney General uh, in the UK said, well, legally... What we just got as, a, as a, a big step forward doesn't really change anything. It still keeps us in this uh, risk of a backstop um, that will continue indefinitely. And um, upon that news, the pound sterling reversed course. We also saw the German blue chip DAX here um, take a dip uh, upon the news. So not very positive. Today, uh, later tonight, um, the British Prime Minister Prime Minister is going to have Parliament vote on her plan about Brexit, which is likely to be voted down once again. This is the second attempt, and Jean-Claude Juncker said there's not a, ch a third chance. Um, then we'll uh, probably see a vote on a no-deal Brexit, with which Parliament is also likely to reject. Then most likely going to uh, go into a delay um, for this Brexit scenario, which of course will keep uncertainty up for businesses who are suffering under the current situation. Now let's look at some corporate news there. Deutsche Bank is once again in the spotlight, this time in New York, after the testimony of um, Donald Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen. Uh, the state attorney general's office has reportedly subpoenaed Germany's biggest lender to reveal details of its links to companies owned by the U.S. president. What are investigators hoping to find? 
Well, uh, you know, once upon a time before Donald Trump was president, he was a real estate businessman and he was looking for some money mm. uh, to buy hotels in uh, Washington, Miami and Chicago and also to buy the Buffalo Bills and National Football League team. But no bank would give him money. No bank except for Deutsche Bank. And uh, while Deutsche Bank has been involved in some shady business and maybe looked the other way once or twice in, in, uh, in their dealings before, this isn't about what Deutsche has done, it is about what Donald Trump has done. Mm. And his former lawyer, uh, Michael Cohen, alleges that he has inflated his assets in order to get money from the bank, that he has inflated these assets um, in order to get a credit line, which um, in the sum of it would uh, amount to a bank fraud. Um, um, uh, if it could be proven. So investigators uh, want to get these documents from uh, Deutsche Bank to uh, figure out what really happened, what the value was that Donald Trump gave, and whether that is what he did. Um, it's going to be difficult, though, to prove anything because a lot of the uh, wealth that Donald Trump has is in real estate, and real estate is very subjective. The value of real estate is very subjective, so that's going to be a difficult task if they want to prove anything there. And to a rather sad one, over the weekend, Boeing 737 Ethiopian airline crashed on its way to Cairns shortly after takeoff. Our countries are beginning to ground Boeing 737 MAX uh, planes. We saw the Dow plummet yesterday over Boeing's woes. What's the latest on Boeing and how is the market taking this? Well, airplane crashes don't just freak out you and me and make people concerned or, or other travelers. They also cause concern for investors. And um, Boeing's shares really tumbled um, on Monday. They lost uh, in parts over 13% over closed when Wall Street closed uh, um, at minus 5% and lost billions in, uh, in money. The company lost billions. This is the second crash of a, a Boeing 737 MAX 8 in half a year. The, we remember the Lion Air crash in, in uh, Indonesia. And uh, so it is, there is concern, there is worry that there might be something fundamentally wrong with this, uh, with this airplane that is so important to Boeing because it is, the, the 737 line has been, has been there for 50 years and it's, one, it, it's really the, the major source of income um, for the company. Um, of course, that has investors worried. Some have even looked um, to, to Airbus, the shares have gained um, on Monday. Um, on these tragic news, um, and uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of airlines and, and regulators are are getting out. Um, Singaporean and Australian airports have banned the the plane from their airports entirely. China has uh, taken out a hundred, nearly a hundred planes from flying. Uh, we've got Ethiopian Airlines and South Africa's Comair also. Um, uh, stopping um, their, their uh, 737 MAX 8s and in Latin America we see a similar picture. Travel companies get a lot of phone calls from concerned customers and the bad thing for Boeing is right now they can't do a whole lot except for sending investigators to the crash site to help um, uh, to help uh, 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 Ethiopia to figure out what caused the crash, but the company really needs to uh, find a way to re, uh, reinstate trust in its technology and in its aircraft before uh, the damage to the brand is, is too bad. Yeah, it's really a scary one there. Let's just hope that Boeing is able to get this sorted out, actually do something about it. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. Cool.